Uh, is my volume loud enough? Double space? Okay. Hi, I'm Saffron. Um, I go by she, her. I'm 17 years old, and I'm currently a grade 12 at GCVI. I'm born and raised in Guelph, and I was one of the organizers for the student walkout last spring, which tried to get Guelph to declare a climate emergency. So, as a youth climate activist, I want to talk about youth climate activists. We completely dominate climate activism and we lead the biggest global protests and strikes while we should be in school. We are told that we are the leaders of the future and therefore the leaders of the climate revolution and that the youth have stepped up and that this is amazing because somebody has to. We are praised for sacrificing our education in exchange for publicity and hopefully political change. Overall, youth have become the leaders of today and of the future with the hopes of saving our own generation. And yet, youth are possibly the worst group to lead this movement. We completely lack political and economical power, experience, and money. And while we may have passion in number, we lack the biggest thing necessary for systematic change, power. And while we may be the leaders of the future, we are respectively not the leaders of the present. Youth are simply not in decision-making positions, and we won't be for a long time. For example, the average CEO is 68 years old, or er, 58 years old, and the average US Senator is 62 years old. In fact, becoming an influential politician or CEO before the age of 40 is extremely rare and difficult to do. And yet, it will be at least 20 more years before anyone from my generation reaches these milestones. But we don't have 20 years. The emergency that we are facing is in the now. And since it will be 20 years before people like me occupy your seats, we are begging you, politicians and CEOs, to make the choice to save my generation and the planet. It is no longer optional to operate at the status quo or to sacrifice the environment for profits or for votes. And there is always an option for you to make ethical decisions. And every time that you make a decision that has an environmental impact, you must make the most moral decision. And because this is an emergency, that decision may have to be radical. But as a person in a position of power, you have an obligation to my generation, to every generation, and to the planet to act in our best interests. This may mean sacrificing short-term profits or making unpopular decisions, but let me tell you something. My generation will not buy from you, we will not vote for you, and we will not support you if you don't act in this manner. If you, a CEO, a politician, do not act in an environmental way, your company or your campaign will die with our planet. If you are a parent or a grandparent, your children need you to behave in a radical way. And I cannot emphasize radical enough. I need you to protest, boycott, sue, vote, and donate. We need you to be more involved in this issue than the youth are. You don't have to be a politician or a CEO to influence society. These people, CEOs, business people, politicians, parents and grandparents, these are the best people to lead the climate revolution, not the youth. And when I say we are the worst group to lead the climate action movement, I mean absolutely no disrespect to my fellow youth activists. We are doing the best we can with what we have, but we're severely disadvantaged in comparison to adults when it comes to creating change. And if the older generation decided to radically fight climate change, the issue would be minimized much faster than if the youth did this. So 
why are we the ones who are leading this movement? This unfortunate reality of youth leadership within this specific movement makes me very nervous. The previous generations have passed the torch on to us much too soon. They believe that their children will solve climate change for them, and so they continue on their day-to-day -day life, maybe avoiding the odd plastic straw here and there. Instead of this, they should work as a generation, both boomers and Gen X, to radically solve the problem that they contributed to, rather than praise the youth for doing their dirty work. They should do this in a radical manner, which matches the intensity of the threat of the climate emergency. Youth don't want to have to compensate for your lack of action, but due to extreme circumstances, we have to. I think I can speak for all youth here when I say we would much rather be in school, and I'm actually missing a really important chemistry lesson that might put me back in my studies. It's disheartening that my generation must sacrifice their education to pick up the slack of previous generations. We, the youth, should not be the champions for climate action. Our parents and our grandparents should be. We are panicking and our future is at stake. We are facing an apocalypse which will be filled with hundreds of millions of deaths and economic and environmental collapse. We are literally in the sixth extinction and I've watched it progress as I've gotten older and I'm only 17 years old. I feel guilty planning my own future as I feel that it is a waste of time given the direction that we are heading in. And I'm Canadian. <laughs> and being Canadian has a lot of benefits in this situation despite the fact that we are one of the main contributors. But nonetheless, our economy and our people will still struggle if not collapse. So why aren't my parents panicking? And why do CEOs, business people, and politicians keep making decisions that only worsen this? Why are people still trying to have children if this is the world that they will grow up in? And why are the older generations so ignorant to the severity of the issue? Not all of us. This is true, not all of us. We need to hold our older generations accountable, but most importantly, we need them to panic. This issue can be minimized if the right people act, and it's high time that we target these people. These people are our parents, our grandparents, CEOs, politicians, business people, and the workforce. People who hold more economic and political influence than the youth. So my final message is this. If you are a part of the older generation, the youth would like you to step up and take the torch back. We need you to panic with us and we need you to act with us. Thank you. Thank you.